So, I put up a video of myself earlier today. In fact, it was recorded last night, quite early last night, kind of around this time, or actually probably about 6 o'clock to 7 last night, and in which people had said they wanted to see vision, so I put in a bit of vision. But one of the problems with that is that my webcam, which links to this particular mic, for whatever reason, I have to twiddle with it because it's supposed to be a 4K webcam. It's not great, and I don't really like the vision on it, and it also makes me look like, you know, when the before and after of the vaccine. It makes me look like the after, so I just said, no, I'll give that a miss. So I recorded last night's video, the one with the vision, using a, cam, a 4K camcorder, but the mic itself is a USB mic, so it doesn't, con you know, as a USB mic, it takes its power out of the PC, so it's not an independently powered mic, so I wasn't able to connect it to the camcorder, so I recorded the soundtrack separately and dubbed it over. Now, it dubbed perfectly because the software lets me do that, but it takes an eternity. I then rendered it in 4K and uploaded it, and just, it's too long. It's too time-consuming. If I'm going to do these videos and get them up and out quickly, then the way I'm doing it at present, just a soundtrack which is then uh, covered for YouTube purposes with a card. Sometimes you might have seen in previous videos, I'll drop in the odd extra slide as well. I generally don't do that. But that's the way it's going to be. Uh, don't forget I'm not monetized. Don't forget that I don't allow comments or even likes on YouTube. And the reason for that is a very, very straightforward but very serious one. Because you get these trolls in the real sense who come on and who just come out with disingenuous remarks all the goddamn time. And, you know, talking to other content creators, and sure I'm just a minnow in this now, I'm just at the start of this, but talking to other content creators, the remarks that just one of these head wreckers can put on youtube would drive you so insane that i just said no i'm making these videos i'm not monetized i don't take advertisements i don't get any money for this i'm not going out under any circumstances with anything i do looking for money so no i don't want these people just coming on and coming out with disingenuous rubbish i don't mind people disagreeing with me and that's one of the things about conservatives because, I mean, it's just hysterical to watch what's going on around that witch, Linda Hayden. It is a panic to watch what is happening there. There was one particular simp, and I won't name him from a pagan perspective. I won't name that simp because he hasn't done me any harm. I don't think he wants to do me any harm, so I won't harm him by naming him. But there was one particular simp who latched onto Linda Hayden and did all these Zoom things with her and all the other grievance mongers and the race baiters. And now, you know, he's got his fingers burnt by getting in with Linda Hayden. Linda Hayden has got, has crossed swords with a certain other individual who I know only too well and only too long. And I will not name her. And the reason why I will not name her is the pagan thing again. Uh, she has done me no harm. She has always been civil to me, this particular woman. If you know my back history here, everybody knows exactly who I'm referring to here. But she's now gone headlong into Linda Hayden, and it's terrific. Because this particular person, well, as I said, I won't name, is a little bit too much uh, addicted to the wokeness as well. She's taken too many woke biscuits. So, unfortunately, we aren't in contact anymore. I wish her the very best of luck. I wish her family the very best of luck. I've said before, I abhor any harassment that that woman gets. She doesn't harass others. From what I know, I haven't seen any evidence of that. So, as long as she's fighting on the argument and not fighting the person, then she's not going to get any trouble from me. And I'll be saying nobody else is to give her any trouble either. She, From what I've seen, she doesn't play the person. She plays the argument. Okay, that's good enough. That's good enough. She has me blocked on Twitter. But that's her decision. You know, the world did keep turning after she blocked me on Twitter. It's okay. And in a melodrama of the Linda Haydeners, I stand with Linda. Yeah, of course you do. Of course you do, kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good video today, a very good video from Thomas Sheridan. It was such a good video that I actually downloaded it because if he doesn't get sucked from YouTube for this, he's not going to get sucked for anything. 
one of my strengths on YouTube, you see, is because I'm unmonetized. It means I have a lot of freedom of copyright under the fair use principles. Not always. RTG zucked me for the Imelda May thing last year. That was before I even got this mic. And you see, I've, I'm an accidental entrant to Irish social uh, content creator, Irish social media content creators, because I got leave for two judicial reviews in 2020. And the judge said, oh, by the way, they'll be by remote hearing. I said, can I do it in an iPhone? No, he said, so you just have to get the equipment. So I got the webcam and I got the mic and the mic. I decided to spend money on the mic and get a mic that was suitable seriously for doing court hearings because the, you can't mess around there um i got the foam as well and that foam is suffering i came in this afternoon and you know just oh there's no words i'm gonna have to boil wash it i'm gonna have to boil wash that foam it's just gross it really no i'm not joking it's you know if you can leave it for 12 hours and it comes <clears throat> you come back and it smells like that Blech. But I'm digressing. Um, thank you for the supportive messages I've got from people in relation to the video that has a vision in. It's not going to be done again or not for a very long time because it's just too much labor. It's just too much labor. Whereas the videos I'm doing like this one now, I can get them done. I can get them rendered. I can get them up. I have done videos and had them up in 10 to 15 minutes. So sorry, guys, it doesn't compete. Um Looking at, there's a lot happening now at the moment. And we talk about Thomas Sheridan in a moment. We'll talk about the vaccine in a moment. But I'm looking at today's Sunday Independent. The Sunday, you know, okay, the Sunday, it's a Sunday Independent. And it's an establishment paper and they're pearl clutching over the far right and all this carry on. Then just to digress, Linda Hayden. I have never seen anybody in that very, very broad and amorphous and moving group known as the alt-right or the far-right or the alt-shite as they oh the alt-shite oh, oh the alt-shite oh, yeah. See, oh, they're, they're not the alt-right it's the alt-shite oh, oh, oh. yeah um i haven't seen anybody in that group come out with texts or tweets as downright offensive and psychotic as Linda Hayden. This gets down to the psychosis of wokeness. This is why they're having such a, a fit around Linda Hayden. That's why. Because she's a hypocrite, but she's also a psychopath. And if she wants to sue me for that, go ahead and sue me. She is a psychopath because she put up tweets of an exceptionally racist nature. Even like the worst of the, the old child who wouldn't put up stuff that Linda Hayden put up. If you take these people who are and it's interesting, actually, I'll digress further. Another one of Linda's, another one of the Wokies out there, because I follow everything they they have, because they don't seem to realise that if you block someone, they can set up silent troll accounts. And what a silent troll account does is it doesn't like or share or put anything up, but it watches. This is how it works. This is how all the guards work. This is how everyone does it. So why are you blocking me? Why are you blocking me? But anyway, I noticed um, one person having an absolute goddamn breakdown last night, you know, and she says, anything we put up, the shite, that's what they're calling them now, the shite will jump on it. Oh, the shite will jump on it. That's the new term. And the extent to which this non-existent group has, they've created their own goddamn bogeyman there. Out of the blue, they invented this monster, the shite, or the, or the alt Alt shite, shiver, shiver. I made it shiver. It's it, it's not the alt right. Shiver, shiver, shiver. Tell yeah, Owen, Oron, yeah. Saw you in that one, please. Yeah, or or Oron, shiver. It's not the alt right. It's the alt shite. <laughs> I would say that that. <coughs> excuse me. I would say that that joke would wear thin, except it wasn't a joke in the start. They probably paid Terry. God knows how much they paid Terry Pro to come up with the alt shite. Nobody in that grouping called the alt-shite would come out with these things. And the alt-shite are pro-science. They're pro-science for one reason. They don't believe that there's anything more than two genders, and that's determined at conception. The alt-shite are pro-science because they believe that masks don't work. The alt-shite are pro-science because they believe that you need to be sceptical with things like vaccines. You know, then the Irish terms, oh, they're all anti-vaxxers. They're not. They're not anti-vaxxers. They're not anti-vaxxers. 
Okay, you get the plants like D Wall, but you know D Wall's a garter plant, but you get those ones who are coming up with this rubbish. But the rest of the alt shite out there, they're not anti vaxxers. Another thing about the, the alt shite is that they're very much in favour of equality before the law. So they're pro justice. One of the very legitimate and serious grievances that's arising at the moment is Black Lives Matter have these protests, they stone guard thee, they're not apprehended for it, they're not charged with it, and nothing gets into the media. On the other hand, then, there's a peaceful protest in Cork and there's a almost exclusively peaceful protest in Dublin, except when Rocket Man appeared. Other than Rocket Man, there was a peaceful protest. And um, they're all charged and battled and everything crack- everybody cracks down on them. The Alchite also are believers in equality before the law in relation to men and women. They don't buy into this, you know... Uh, present disgusting gaslight regarding Sarah Everard who by now we're supposed to say all men are guilty that's what that gaslight is it's a gaslight that's all so and, and the alt shite don't block they don't block the alt shite engage with people where the wokies they block and like Linda Hayden and all these other ones it's trannies as well they block left right and center well sorry I'm going to speak out I don't believe there's anything more than two genders Okay, and I'm a, you know, I'm a gay man. Thomas was talking in the video linked about AIDS and the spread of AIDS. I always, I was very promiscuous in my mid to late 20s. I mean extremely promiscuous because I had, you know, I had been late coming out. I came out when I was 25 and then I caught up. And this is what you do. And, you know, I got stuck in when I was in my 20s. And I was in college at the time as well. I was a mature student, but I was hanging around with the gay society in uni and you know after each meeting we just go back somewhere and we would put words into action so to speak you know threesomes foursomes you name it i loved megan markle's dress i loved megan markle's dress i tell you i've worn that in real life <laughs> i've uh, the pattern was very familiar on that dress i'm not <laughs> I, I have to be careful i have quite a mainstream audience of the couple of hundred who follow me i mean but megan markle's dress yeah been there done that pet you know mm. <laughs> it was a very very familiar pattern oh god where did she get that dress from who put who burlesqued her by putting her in that dress but i want to get on to today's sunday i've waffled now i want to get on to today's sunday independent owen harris today the headline in Harris's article, Commission on Media is a Joke if Russ Bridger isn't forced to resign. I'm not an absolute unconditional fan of Owen Harris. When he waffles on about walking down to the Jolly Brise in Cork, I just say, see you next week. Or Posey the dog. It goes on about, you know, Posey the dog and walking down to the Jolly I took a stroll today. I can't do his Cork accent. Owen Harris, I took a stroll. And sure, I walked out the door and there was that lovely West Cork atmosphere. And like any good Irish man would do since Podrick Pierce, I took a stroll down to Le Jolly Brise in Cork, in Skibreen. And sure, I took Posey with me, and Posey being po- Oh, God, get on with it. Get on with it, get on with it. Stick to the politics zone, because he's really good at that. I'm jeering him, but Harris, one of the things I like about Harris is that he's, he sets his own agenda. Now, it has to be qualified by the fact that he tends to be a bit sycophantic of the sitting Taoiseach, but not today. For him to actually now dump on Micheál Martin, as he does today, that's a cracker. That shows how bloody awful Martin is. Martin's worse than Veradker. Yeah, I never thought I'd end up saying that. Martin is worse than Veradker. Commission on media is a joke if Russ Bridger isn't forced to resign. Now, what he's talking about in this article is a new media commission to decide the future of the media in Ireland. Look, here, I uh, will get to the point... And read straight from... I won't read the whole article. I would have needed to swallow a monster toad to prepare me for both the Taoiseach and Catherine Martin's despicable decision on the Alan Rusbridger case. Unless you read The Irish and Sunday Independence, this story may be new to you. The Irish Times delayed covering it and RTE did not interview Maria Cahill until it was over. Here's the story. Before I begin... One thing that Harris has always talked about is the danger, and he's talked about it for 20 years, because I followed him in the Sunday Times. He's talked about the danger of the dominance of RTE. We only got TV3 in 1998, 
and ostensibly TV3 was surprised, supposed to provide a balance in the mainstream media whereby there'd be somebody who'd compete with RTE. Well, how has that turned out? Everyone in TV3 wants to go over and work in Montrose. They're all like the Irish Times. That The Holy Grail is the permanent job in Montrose. Plot, plot spoiler, you're not going to get one. That goes to insiders like Keelan Shandley. And they said, oh, Keelan Shandley. Keelan Shandley was a, a great reporter of social justice. No, she wasn't. Social justice in RTE language means woke. Right? So what Harris is talking about here is the dominance of RTE. And we've seen that since 2020. We've seen how dangerous RTE's dominance has been and how much damage it has done. Getting back to Harris's article. Last Sunday week, British newspapers were agog at an admission by Roy Greenslade, a former columnist on The Guardian, that he had been an active agent of influence for the provisional IRA in writing for that paper. Maria Cahill recalled that when Spotlight in 2014 revealed her rape by an IRA member, Roy Greenslade had attacked her and his editor, Alan Rusbridger, gave her no redress. Cahill reasonably called on Rusbridger to resign from the Future of Media Commission to which he has been appointed. The Irish Times took five days to deal with this story. It isn't hard to conclude the delay was connected with the paper's long association with The Guardian, for which its leading columnist, Fintan O'Toole, writes frequently. RTE was much more partisan. Although RTE had never once interviewed Maria Cahill, John Williams, managing director of RTE News... Ah, ah, boys and girls, have I mentioned John Williams before? Don't say that I don't do the watching out for you. We're watching RTE out here so that you don't have to. John Williams, the conehead, reappears with the smug, watery face. Although RTE had never once interviewed Maria Cahill, John Williams, managing director of RTE News, effectively took sides by retweeting Russ Bridger's defence of himself in The Guardian and The Irish Times. For the Taoiseach, Catherine Martin and the Future of Media Commission to conclude that Alan Russ Bridger was a fit member of the commission means that they did not do, do due diligence. That's a tongue twister. They did not do due diligence. Let me do some for them. I'm still reading Harris's article here. Let me do some for them. Alan Rusbridger was editor of The Guardian for 20 of the Greenslade years between 1995 and 2015. Some 21 years ago, the trusted journalist Stephen Glover contacted me in connection with a three-part article he later published in The Spectator, alleging there was a Republican cell at the heart of The Guardian. Well, I could have told them that. Rusbridger blustered but significantly did not sue, simply because Glover's charges could be stood up. Recalling the article two weeks ago in the Daily Mail, Glover correctly pointed out that probably more influential than the deceitful Roy Greenslade was Ronan Bennett, who was the partner of Georgina Henry, the deputy editor of The Guardian. In 1975, Bennett served six months in Long Kesh for the murder of a Northern Ireland policeman before being released because his identification in a parade was deemed by a judge to be unsatisfactory. Glover wrote... In his credit, Ronan Bennett never hid his beliefs and on account of them he was barred from the House of Commons in 1987 after being hired as a researcher by a young Labour MP called Jeremy Corbyn, a man whose own Republican sympathies are notorious. I'll interject with this. Michael Foote walked out of a meeting in which pro-IRA remarks are being made. That was one of the cardinal differences between Michael Foote and Jeremy Corbyn. Michael Foote is seen as having been one of the most dyed-in-the-wool left-wing leaders of the Labour Party, but Michael Foote, OK, he was, and his politics, in my opinion, were flawed. He came out with the manifesto that led to Labour having a terrible defeat in 1983. It was Neil Kinnock and Tony Blair who realised that that kind of thing just doesn't cut it. It's the same now today with wokeness. Jeremy Corbyn was a, citadel, was a paragon of wokeness. Corbyn just stinks and he's anti-Semitic and he's linked to, well, he'll deny that, but he's linked to anti-Semitic, very, very virulently anti-Semitic people in the Labour Party. Maureen Lipman did resurrected the character BT Bellman from those <laughs> wonderful BT ads in the 80s and 90s. And she was talking about the anti-Semitism in the Labour Party of Jeremy Corbyn. Yes, Maureen was right. Maureen was right. Um. So... Although Michael Foote was not 
didn't, you know, wasn't electorally successful in 1983. Foote was an academic. He was a highly educated, highly civilised, highly decent man. He was probably, he was one of those kind of people who'd make you want to almost like socialism because he was, he was, a, you know, he was a gentleman and a scholar. Michael Foote was. Corbyn was one of those things. And that's not even mentioning the people who associate, all the Wokies who associate with Corbyn. You know, so now instead they have a complete non-entity, Keir Starmer in charge of the Labour Party. Oh, oh. What they have to do is they have to start an onslaught against wokeness. The next mainstream political party that says it's going after wokeness, you see what happens. Alan Rusbridger, just to remind my listeners, Rusbridger is now the... uh, He's now on the Future of Media Commission of Ireland, okay? Just to reiterate, get back to what I was saying. Alan Rusbridger was so close to Ronan Bennett... That they once made a, that they made a once-off television film, Fields of Gold, which Bennett set up, and which must have been flattering to Russ Bridger's ego. All the Wokies are narcissists, Linda Hayden. Okay, that's their Achilles heel is the narcissism of the Wokies. Look at Veradker. Look at Veradker. Look at that wo- that narcissism. And you see the alt the alt shite <laughs> the alt shite don't do that. They're not narcissistic. In that same way. As an aside again. To have seen the extent to which now the Wokies are cutting their paradigm. In relation to how the alt shite or the shite as they call them will respond. It's a hell of a thing. It's a hell of a thing. It was done effortlessly. Getting back to the article. In late 2000. This is. um, Listen to this next paragraph. In late 2000. Ronan Bennett told the spectator. That he wouldn't have turned in the Oma bombers. Close to that time, he and Alan Rusbridger would have been working on their film, which came out in 2002. Now, if that doesn't tell you enough about Alan Rusbridger, I don't know what will. And Rusbridger is supported by Michal Martin and Catherine, just looking back at the article, Catherine Martin. Coincidence. Coincidence. Michal Martin, Catherine Martin, John Williams. They support Alan Rusbridger. Well, I read that um, last paragraph again. In late 2000, Ronan Bennett told the spectator that he wouldn't have turned in the OMA bombers. Close to that time, he and Alan Rusbridger would have been working on their film, which came out in 2002. People, I said this to you. Be focused. We will win this, as we are. We will win this by continuing to be focused. My focus, and it was after 2020, in the general election here in Ireland in February 2020, I said to hell with politics, to hell with playing into the system, be in the system, don't be of it, and now I'm going to use my social media presence, such as it is, to go after the mainstream media. That's the only thing that concerns me, is the mainstream media. Different people, Thomas Sheridan has different takes, Different, lots of other people have different takes. Mine is the mainstream media. This, in my opinion, vindicates me. Furthermore, in a defiant interview at the Irish Post in March 2014, Roy Greenslade explained why he stood surety for John Downey, the Hyde Park bomber responsible for killing four British soldiers and seven horses. So if Russ Bridger was not aware that Greenslade and Bennett were rabid IRA and violence supporters, that's my edition, he must have been the only journalist in London to be in the dark. Maria Cahill recalled on Pat Kenny, Yes News Talk, unlike RTE, covered the story, that Private Eye in the 2000s referred to Roy Greenslade as Roy of the Provos. Ed Maloney, on October 28th, 2014, replying to Greenslade's attack on Cahill, wrote, The sun rises each morning and sets each evening, and with the same certainty, whenever Sinn Féin leader Gerry Adams is in trouble, Guardian columnist Roy, Roy Greenslade can be relied on to come riding to the rescue. Yeah, and that's similar, I'm, st- I'm interjecting now, that's similar to how you can always rely on RTE to come riding to the rescue of Varadkar. We are seeing the same thing. Noam Chomsky talks about it, and I'm not by any means a universal fan of Noam Chomsky, but he does talk, and he's very, he's very good on this particular topic of manufactured consent. Look it up. Manufactured consent. 
how the mainstream media creates a mood among a certain critical mass of the populace, and they do it by a number of specific things. They do it by lying, as I said RTE did about Veradkar in 2019, but they also do it by omission, and they do it by selectivity. So my video, the one with, of yesterday with me in vision, is talking about how the mainstream media is not focusing on Richard Boyd Barrett's seizure of private property bill, just to reiterate, it's private property. That means... If that constitutional amendment is made, the Gardaí can come into your home for any reason they want to. They can search your computer for any reason they want to. They can search all your belongings for any reason they want to. You don't have private property after that. They can requisition any one of your belongings for anything they want to. A friend of mine was done in the Irish water protests years ago, and the Gardaí seized a leather jacket of his. They said it was uh, evidence, but he eventually, by banging at it, he got the leather jacket back. Now... He wouldn't get it back now. They'd destroy it or they'd sell it. If if Boyd Barrett's absolutely nefarious constitutional amendment gets through. That has to be fought like we've never fought anything. And the mainstream media will support Boyd Barrett. You watch this. <clears throat> Getting back to Owen Harris. Given the sheer weight of evidence to the contrary, how can the Taoiseach and the Commission expect us to believe Russ Bridger, who spent 20 years reading Roy Greenslade's partisan pro-IRA copy and made a television film with Ronan Bennett, who never concealed his IRA sympathies, could not have been aware of their support for the IRA? How can we take seriously Russ Bridger's claim that there was no Republican cell pulling strings in The Guardian? Easy, we can't. Clearly, the Commission didn't dig into Russ Bridger's politics because they were so thrilled to get a top-notch Guardian lovey on board. And thank you, Owen Harris. There you have it. There is exactly... Harris has got it in a nutshell there. There is how the Irish mainstream media woke. Work. Freudian slip. Freudian slip. That's how they work. That's how they take. Oh, he... Wor- oh, oh, Schiffer. Schiffer. Yes, Killian. He worked for the Guardian. Oh, well, then he walks in water. And he also worked for the BBC, maybe. You know, oh, my, my, my. They don't say that about people in Channel 4. But Channel 4 still has a lot of the legacy of the days when it actually genuinely was anti-establishment. The first 10 years of Channel 4, oh God, it ripped the rule book up, Channel 4 did. That was television, Channel 4. I remember it in my teenage years, in the middle to late 80s, you know. I wouldn't want to go out. I just want to stay at home and watch Channel 4 because there's so much good stuff on Channel 4. But gone are those days. <coughs> Owen Harris continues. But I have been around a lot longer than the members of the Commission. That again, just to reiterate, the new uh, Irish Future of Media Commission. And I have followed Russ Bridger's career closely in relation to the Guardian's coverage of Sinn Féin and IRA issues. Unlike the Commission, I can clearly see that years of hanging out with IRA supporters like Greenslade and Bennett has left at least one significant cultural mark on Alan Rusbridger. Any other newspaper editor faced with Maureen Cahill's charges would have resigned without delay, but Rusbridger has certainly picked up the Sinn Féin culture of brazening it out to the bitter end. So did Davy Stockbrokers. By my count, he issued at least five statements, becoming increasingly incontinent in his interventions in what increasingly looked like a political campaign. His apologia last Sunday on The Guardian Online was both arrogant and self-centred. That's how narcissistic psychopaths are, Owen. You're to blame, I'm not to blame. Think of Varadkar, 2019, the whistleblowing doctors. I'm sorry if it seemed. Same thing. I didn't even read... um, Russ Bridger's apology. You don't have to. I know what, you know. In a piece of 23 paragraphs, Maria Cahill's name wasn't mentioned until the 21st paragraph. He also tried the ploy of wrapping himself in the peace process, this despite Maria Cahill's ordeal having taken place well after the Good Friday Agreement. But Russ Bridger really didn't have to work so hard because a consensus to retain him, in spite of Cahill's complaints, was underway. Last Sunday... Mark Little, media mogul and commission member, signalled its mind in advance of the decision by retweeting Russ Bridger's claim that there was no Republican cell pulling editorial strings in The Guardian. That's a lie. From what we've seen now, that's a lie. Adding momentum on Monday, John Williams retweeted the Russ Bridger article, although RTE had still not covered the story by interviewing Maria Cahill. 
The Taoiseach should have reacted with fury. Not Michal Martin, Owen, sorry. The Taoiseach should have reacted with fury to RTE's brazen attempt to nudge the decision of a state commission and called for William, William's resignation. Two. Just to reiterate that paragraph, sorry, I made a mess of that one. The Taoiseach should have reacted with fury to RTE's brazen attempt to nudge the decision of a state commission and called for Williams's resignation too. RTE's brazen attempt to nudge the decision of a state commission. I said it to you all. I said it in 2019. I said it in 2020. They're your enemy. Okay? They're your enemy. Not the alt-right or the alt-shite. Uh-huh. Not them. The mainstream media in this country, particularly the state subsidised through your licence fee and additional direct subsidy of the government, particularly the state subsidised RTE, they're your enemy. Okay? I am delighted and most impressed, very seriously, to see Owen Harris behave in this article like a journalist. Carrying on. But last Tuesday afternoon, the Commission released a statement saying the members unanimously agreed that Rusbridger should remain. Incredibly, in a panel of ten members, not one of the six women members protested that it looked like a rape victim's testimony was being marginalised so the Commission could keep a cherished lovey on board. My interjection, they're hypocrites. They're all talking about Sarah Everard. They don't care about Sarah Everard. I probably care more about Sarah Everard than they do. Sarah Everard is a pawn being used by Hazel Chu and all of these similar ones just to virtue signal. Given the craven, craven silence of... Sorry. Given the craven silence of feminists in the media and academia... We must salute the courage of Regina Doherty, who has never retreated on this issue. Okay, fair dues, yeah. We must also salute Alan Kelly, bleh, Willie O'Dea and Senator Malcolm Byrne, who continue to ask hard questions. This is not over. Owen Harris, Sunday Independent, 14th March 2021. Well done, Owen Harris, well done. I've commended him before, but that's his best article that I've read in 25 years. That's his best article that I've read in 25 years. Well done, Owen. Thank you. It gets us so much in that, isn't there? There's so much in it. He's talking about the wokeness of this media commission with six women on it who aren't condemning somebody who took a, shall we say, a very equivocal approach to Maria Cahill's rapists. But that's the woke. There you go. I stand with Linda. Hey. So much to get through, isn't there? So much to get through. This... Future of Media Commission is very much it's another Trojan horse a, a, a Trojan horse is not a, a formal term to use I suppose I'm being a bit more formal and substantial at the end of this video than I was at the beginning look something up a colourable manoeuvre colourability is a doctrine it's a doctrine in litigation it means it's primarily a government thing to do not always but primarily a government thing to do the guards do it as well it means bringing in legislation primary or secondary ministerial guidelines, Garda guidelines, which are designed to undermine and subvert and get around constitutional barriers. That's what the doctrine of colorability is. Um, this is one to look at as well. Owen Harris is quite right. You know, Richard Boyd Barrett's plan that I spoke about at length in yesterday's video is very, very serious because that's about giving the guard the powers to just do what they want, really. It's not about easing the housing shortage. Guys, if you think it's about that, you're listening to the wrong channel here. If you think it's about that, you're not listening to this. They wouldn't be listening to this channel. Anybody who'd think that, they wouldn't be listening. You know, so this ties in, I suppose, to yesterday's video where we're talking about Richard Boyd Barrett, who's a very, very bad man. And Micheál Martin now today, who's a very, very bad man as well. Micheál Martin is the bad man of the coward, the weak, spineless, simpy, nice guy coward. Martin is a nice guy. This, you know, when they had that ball last year for the retiring Phil Collins, not the baldy drummer in Genesis, but a reception manager in RTE, you know, that was Martin's chance to say, look, you're 
scoffing at the lockdown, you're scoffing at all that. He just said he was disappointed. Well, I want this to be on Martin's head. Not Veradkar's even, would you believe? As much as I have as much contempt as I have for Veradkar. Martin was Veradkar's enabler. He should have been opposing Veradkar. Instead, he's the enabler. Well, let it be on his head. All because this weak little cork simp wanted to be Taoiseach for a day. King for a day. And he's even limited his time. So there's a lame duck going in. Because apparently we're going to have a rotating Taoiseach. Yeah. And Martin's such a simp. He'll do that rather than just collapse the government. Martin is such a weak, spineless, contemptible little simp. He'll do that. And for a long time, Harris was blowing Martin's trumpet on in the Sunday Independent, really up to about a couple of weeks ago, saying, you know, he, they kept Sinn Féin out of government. Well, guys, what you resist persists. Although people are actually seeing through Sinn Féin as well. The next government, and here I am talking about politics, although I said I wasn't running and all of that, I'm not running. Here I am talking about politics. The only way out of this is to vote for independence. Real, in, the Matty McGraths. I would rather have a Doyle and a cabinet full of Matty McGraths. They couldn't be any more incompetent and wasteful than cretins like Simon Harris anyway. Stephen Donnelly. It's not as, you know, oh, we have them at the helm during this terrible crisis. How's the vaccine turning out, guys? Hmm? 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 Look at Thomas Sheridan's video link below.